Greetings subscribers and other curious persons. I've been thinking a lot over the past weeks on and off about Chad Evans and I think I finally have enough handle on it to make some public comment. Now for those of you not familiar with Chad Evans, he's a footballer who was released late last year having served part of a sentence for rape. Now, the uncontested facts are that he and a fellow player rented a room for the purposes of going out, visiting various pubs and clubs, finding women, bringing them back to the club and having, sorry, back to the room and having one night stands with them. At the time he did this, he was in a long-term relationship. Now, where the facts differ between his case and the case the prosecution made was that he alleged that he returned alone to the room, discovered his colleague in fragrante delicto with a young lady, she consented to having sex with him. They had drunken but consensual sex and then he left not believing he had done anything wrong. The prosecution alleged he entered the room, discovered his colleague in fragrante delicto with a young lady and without seeking consent joined in. Now, he was convicted and upon his release has lodged an appeal. He claims that he is sorry that the young lady has suffered humiliation and embarrassment due to this situation, but that he sought consent. Now, this has not so far been a particularly noteworthy event. Sadly, these kind of things happen more often than they should. But the thing that makes it noteworthy is the fact that having been released from prison, his stance is, I've lodged an appeal, I'm not a rapist, I should get a job back with my original club. His original club have said, you have a rape conviction. We don't want to employ you. A second football club made approaches to him and then when sponsors and fans went, we disapprove of you hiring a rapist, went, no, we're not going to give you a contract. A third club entered into negotiations with him and just before he signed the contract, the club pulled out on the basis that fans and sponsors had indicated that they would withdraw their support if the club hired a rapist. Now, there are two issues here. One of them being whether his conviction should be a barrier and the second being whether, given he has lodged an appeal, he should be con considered to be a convicted criminal or not. Now, as the conviction is only relevant if it's something that should be considered to be live, I'll take the second question first. Now, I don't know all of the facts. I suspect anyone who wasn't outside of that room doesn't know all of the facts. So we have three people, all of whom are making no secret of the fact they were drunk. And based on the testimony available, he was found guilty of rape. So had he not lodged the appeal, he would be a convicted rapist. Now, the purpose of an appeal 
is to correct an error. But just as someone is innocent until they are found guilty of a crime, the appeal doesn't change the conviction until it's upheld. He is alleging mistakes are made, but he has failed to prove them. So he was found, beyond reasonable doubt, to be a rapist. He has alleged errors were made in that court hearing. And so he has his opportunity to raise those errors before the court and have the conviction reassessed. But until it is, because one of the tenets of justice is that there should be certainty, the conviction is live, so he is a rapist. So it is appropriate for him to be called that, amongst other things. He is also a footballer, a man, and so forth. Now, the second issue is whether, given that he has served time for the crime and been released, it should therefore be taken into consideration. If he wanted to get a job as a street sweeper or a burger flipper in McDonald's or a longshore fisherman, it would be much less relevant. What has made it particularly relevant here is the fact that he is high profile. So does his status make a difference? Well, I don't think footballers should be held up to be examples of what is a good member of society. So the argument that he is a role model for others seems a little bit unpleasant, unnecessary, wrong to me. I don't think that being a footballer is an easy job. I don't think that being a footballer is a trivial thing to do. However, I don't think being a footballer makes you a hero compared to say, being a fireman or a policeman or even a politician or a lawyer or someone who works to change society in a meaningful fashion, someone who works to protect others. Football is, whilst it may be physically and mentally more arduous than some other pursuits, fundamentally an entertainment. So just like any other celebrity, while it makes him well known, it doesn't make him a hero. So I don't think people should look to his behaviour and say, this is a model of a good member of society. However, that doesn't change the fact that my belief that we should model our behaviour on those who work to follow the best moral codes, devote themselves to tasks that are ethically and legally progressive, is not a commonly held one. Many more people do know all of the members of a particular football team. They can name off the top of their head every member of One Direction or another popular band. They can discuss in detail Justin Bieber's itinerary for the past umpteen months, and yet they can't name a single High Court judge. They don't know the name of the head of their local police force. They don't tend to even know who their local police officers are. So society's view of how significant Ched Edwards is differs significantly from mine. So unfortunately, the fact that lots of people do believe that he is important and equate that importance with being an example of what you should do means that his behaviour is 
a relevant consideration when saying, is this the kind of person we want to encourage? And I have no problem saying that we don't want to hold rape up as an example of acceptable behaviour, as something that is potentially rewarded. And so there are some people who, supporting him, believe that it is unfair that he should not be able to get a job when he maintains his innocence. And there is a solution to that. He can take the conviction, appeal it, which he has done. And as I have said before, if the appeal is upheld, the conviction will be struck out. He will no longer be a rapist, at which point he will be innocent. At that point, if he is proved by the English legal system to be innocent of rape, I would stand wholeheartedly behind him being allowed to continue his job on the basis that he is not being held up as a rapist being rewarded at that point. But until then, given the vast amounts of money he made, he should be able to sit back and stop work until the conviction has been appealed. And if he has spent the vast quantity of money that he earned before his conviction and cannot now support himself, then really, well, uh, diddums. If people can live on considerably less than a footballer's salary and still plan for their future, then I don't really have any sympathy for someone whose defence is, I went out intending to cheat on my girlfriend, got drunk, had a meaningless one night stand with someone while cheating on my girlfriend, but it wasn't actually a crime. So, even if he isn't a rapist, and I don't have the evidence in front of me, I don't have a stance on whether he is or not, beyond the fact that society has defined him as one, then he is still, to my mind, an unpleasant example of a human being. Someone who is below the midpoint on behaviour that is acceptable in a civilised society. And as a disloyal person, I don't think his previous club owes him any loyalty at all. I would be quite happy to see football clubs say, we're not doing this on the basis of the rape conviction, we're doing this on the basis that he's a cheapy cheating, lying son of a bitch. And we don't want cheating, lying sons of bitches working for us because we don't want to bring football in disrepute. Because there are enough problems with football already and we don't want to be part of the problem. We want to make football something that does contain role models. And so, on the very small chance that the chairman of a major football club is watching my vlogs, there's my challenge to you. Recruit players who are decent human beings. Run your club on the basis that you are providing entertainment. So you should try to provide entertainment that is socially progressive, not socially destructive. Toodaloo!